Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and anybody else who is watching. It's nice to be back again after yesterday. And so today we're doing a little tutorial on using tetradic colors, which is four colors. And I'll show you a bit more about that in a minute. But first things first, I finally got my 600 page book in the in the mail. So I've sorted all that out. I'll make a video later to show you guys. Although I won't be I, I won't be starting the challenge till June, but I've already got it and it's there and it's beautiful. But yes, can't wait. Anyway, so straight into the tetradic tetradic English tongue twister. All right, so the first thing is it's two complementary pairs. So we have our color wheel up here. And we'll come in, so two pairs, so you know, say we usually have your red and green. Instead of going just red and just green, you go purple and orange, and then go down, so more pink, red, purple, and red, orange, and then green, and like that. So that's all well, well and good, but this is one of the hardest colour schemes to get a hold of. And that's because there's so many colours and you have to note the balance between the warms and cools. So you've got that that line between the warms and cools. Um, it always forms a rectangle. For this one there are other versions where it forms a square but that's a different thing entirely. And it, it gives off a rich feel to it and is good with flashy subjects. But be careful with balance because it is very hard to get a hold of. Alright, so let's give this a shot. So we've got our colours. So we've got, these are the base colours. We're not going to use these base colours because it'll look really bright and jarring and just kill your eyeballs. So we'll just put those there. I'll note that those are our colours. And so you generally have to pick one dominant colour for your colouring of your, your creature. So when we think about it, we'll go, so what's the most likely colour, oh, excuse me, that will work best to show off all the other colours. So we've got a few warm colours and this one's rearing on the edge of warm and cool. So these three colours will go really good together as the main dominant colours, whereas this one can be more of a little colour like the eyes, maybe the feathers. So if I go purple, pinky purple, and we'll give that a whirl um, as the main colour. So we'll go cut a little bit like that. And so the main colour, meaning it's going to take up most of the drawing. So for this dragon, it's going to be the body of the dragon as well as I'm going to add some extra like the underwings and the belly as this colour. Like so. And those ears. A bit lighter in those, I think. There we go. So that's our main colour. So like the, our dominant colour. Which I'm actually going to add one more in here, not quite, that's all right. So we've got this split off into this color and this color at the moment and our back are darker, dark colors, which is all right, the same sort of thing. All right, and then you think, what could work next? So what goes with this pinky purple? Actually, We'll go, we'll put in orange first, so we'll go, never use the brightest bright of that colour, it just does not look any good. So I'll track orange to the feathers, or the main feathers here, like that. And that gives us a little bit, not a dominant thing, just a little, and perhaps a little bit of brown for these little horns peeking in there. Oops. Like so. So we've got our orange, which turns into brown, of course, in like that. Now you think, all right, what next is going to look all right? So we've got quite bright colours here. So if I come in and stick blue, and we'll go, all right, so we'll try a little bit of 
blue, perhaps a little bit lighter in there. That looks not too bad, a bit lighter there. Oops. Like this. And then darken it up for the back one. So yeah, alright, that looks reasonable. And you think, alright, let's see. We stick to the same feel. So if we go this color for this one, and a little bit darker for those back feathers, don't want those tiny little white specks that are terrible. All right. So then we've got a darker blue and a lightish blue in there like that. Now, you want to work out, do you want to add a dark green to this or do we want to go straight into, back into the blue? But that green works nicely. A little bit off with this colour though, so we'll fix that up. So you feel like, alright, so we need to go the wings a little bit different. We can even go in and just, whoops, like that, or even grab in some more green in there, and we'll, that's nice, that's definitely nice, like that. Now we we're also missing the underbelly of the dragon, so I'm going to go a bit lighter on this. And then see how those, it's kind of, the pink's kind of jarring with that green. Oops. Alright. So see how that pink is just not quite working with that green? It's because we're in completely different sizes and saturation, so it's not going to look as good. There we go. Because it's a more pastely dragon. And then we could add like a more brightish. So we don't have much orange, so we can come in and maybe give him a bright brownish coloured eye. And then that dark. Oops. That dark for this one. And then that green is a little bit dominant, so I'm going to take some of it away because our dominant colour is meant to be our pink. And just change up a little bit. Always play with it. Like if it doesn't look right, change it up just the tiniest bit because you never know what you might get. Alright, so there's an example. I'm going to make another one, and but with the same colours, and show you the different sorts of things you can do with it. There's almost, limit oops, there's almost limitless ways to do this sort of thing. Alright, so we've got the same colours, so we've got a green, so we'll try with the, the, the main of the, the main colour being the green. I'm going to go down a little bit and lighten it like that. Oops, what I'm going to do is make another. And like this. One piece at a time, because you can always change it. Alright, so this is my dominant colour. I'm going to just do those light green. Mm. 
tubes. For the underbelly. And I'm going to, instead of making it different up there, I'm going to blend it in a little bit better. So I'm going to go with green here. Because you want to make sure the balance works. So this one's slightly off balance because that whole thing is completely different colour to the dragon. It doesn't look like it suits the dragon as well. So when we think, and then we go, alright, so we still haven't added other colours, so we'll go with the blue again. And that's nice, it just nicely fades into that. And darker for the back feathers. And you go, alright, what do we need to do here? So. We've really only got two colours at the moment, so you can think, where else can we add some colours? Let's go purple and go really darkish purple to pull the wings in. Like this. An often good way to do is also add jewellery to your creature. Then go, alright, so we need to add darker in the background. Now, the complementary colours, much like the complementary colours, these next two colours, so the pink and the orange, are the ones, that, the things that you want to make the creatures stand out, sort of look along the character. So we've got purple in there, we'll make the eyes get orange again. Go blackish for the pupil. Go, alright, so we want them to look this direction and to the tail, so. I've made that like that, and then we'll go more pink and purple for the wings, but much lighter. And then go, alright, so we might add orange instead. That works nicely because it complements the blues and the green. And go, alright. We can go, we haven't used much pink, so we'll see how that goes with the Add it in there. And maybe add a little bit more brightness to the tail. Alright. So you look at it, sometimes it looks a little bit odd. That's because we've mixed all four in here. So rather than doing that, what I might do what I might is try and combine then we don't have blue. So that goes into the triadric sort of feel to it. Then we can go blue, darker blue for these horns. And then I might go darker blue for the eyes instead. Like a light crystal blue. And then that works much, much nicer. So it's all about balancing out the colours. So with this first one, we have kind of just went from straight everywhere. We've chucked the colours completely all over the place. Like, you know, maybe this looks like, you know, whatever. But from this second one, we've carefully planned out the fact that the the greens are going to mush nicely in here. Like, it's the same green, like, you know, the green, it's just changing the saturation and brightness. And then the underbelly is the green as well. So the green is the dominant colour, the main colour in this creature. And then we've got orange, which is pretty bright. There's only two sections where that is. And then a little bit on the wings to just pull the, so using the complementary scene across from each other. So that instead of going, say, blue or something like that, I went orange because it's directly across. So it's sort of, it like, 
blends in a little bit better, especially that that's type like that kind of it looks bushland like swampy. And then I've added these pink in here so that it's almost invisible in reality. It's kind of hiding because it's really tiny. And then you see the same kind of pink on the tail and the the feathers on the head. So you're looking down the body and at the wings. The first and then you've also got those little pieces of blue as like another less dominant colour. So we've got the four colours, but our main dominant colour is green because it controls most of that dragon. Now for another example, because we haven't been on here for very long, we'll chuck in another one. We'll go We'll swap out our colours though. It's always a good idea to like play with your colours. See the first time wasn't quite right. So you go, alright, we're using the same colours, what else can I do? And you look at it and you go, alright, alright, we could do this, this and this and just nicely blend it together. So in this one I'll go let's go yellow, green, red and purple. So there's our rectangle, my poorly line, poor line skills. And we go, alright, so these are our mains. Yellow, green, red, and... So in this case, we have more closer to the warm colour spectrum. Well, kind of a bit of both, really. It's always kind of a symmetrical size. One too warm, too cool. And so we'll go, alright. So, we need our dominant colour again, which... We can go... Purple. So we'll make purple our dominant colour. Make a nice light purple. I usually have this in there, but I don't care. And I'll just kind of come in here and colour it in purple. And go dark off all the, the legs and zig back here. Go, alright, what can we do next? We need a lighter purple for the belly. So purple's our dominant colour. And then a darker purple for our first part of the wing. We go, alright, what colour? is going to make the the balance between these two colours. So we'll go all right. We can have a look at red. Red's closest to pink, so what we could do, you go down. There we go. See how it just kind of blends into that wing. You're also thinking at the same time of the small, medium, large colours. So with the drawing, you always have the dominant main part, which is the bigger pieces. So like this body is one big piece. And the medium pieces, so like the, the wing flaps here, they're medium-sized pieces to colour in. And then the little pieces, which on this one, we have all the wing fe the feathers, the eye, the ear, the claws, the tail feathers, the so small, medium, large pieces in your drawing. And so it balances it out, especially when you have such a difficult colour scheme like the tetradic one. You can sit there and go, all right, which ones can I blend the colours in? So like we're going over here, we'll go for a lighter pink, because pink and purple go together. Well, in a sense. A little bit more saturated. 
like so, and then a little bit darker. So again, we're still sticking to those main colors. However, we're just changing the saturation and the brightness, which is what makes it look so interesting. Never ever do the same colors straight off that color wheel. It looks bright and it hurts your eyeballs and anybody else's eyeballs. All right, so we've got this basic point where we've gotten and darken it up and everything. And so I think, all right, what's our next, what's the color that's going to be probably a bit too out there to use in this sort of thing? So we could go yellow and then go nice darken it out for this part. Go, does that look all right? Not quite. Mm. It's not quite working, so we'll go into the green and we'll give that one a go. So green, and see that looks much nicer, much more balanced. Just play, make sure you always play with your colors. And then we'll go darker for the back one. And then where's that coming from there? And then the same green we're going to do for the feathers, except a little bit, a little bit more of a change to it, like that. So it kind of almost blends to it. And then the feathers at the tail, I'm going to make it a little bit brighter, so your eye is drawn over to here. So when a person looks at it, they're going to look at the purple first, mostly, most likely, you know, the dominant color that you're using, and then up to the odd colors, which at this stage is the green, and then down to the rest of the drawing. So now we've got our green laid out, we'll go back into the yellow. So because the yellow didn't quite suit for any large things, I'm going to give it the eye instead. So a nice small space, and then more of a brownish for the horns. So you see, you don't have to use all four colors the same amount. You can use some colors enough so that, you know, it's there. So like, you know, even just an eyeball, just one eye and it still works. And then when you have something like that, oh, I might darken that eye actually. When you have something like that, you go in with a shading First off, I'll grab this and I'll show you the different, so this is the colors directly off the color wheel. You grab that purple there and a different purple, but it's the same. The only thing we've changed is the saturation and the brightness. And then a light, we've got that one and that one and that one. And then the yellow, we've just got two different, we've got three different colors on that. So it's just the tint and stuff, nothing to do with the hue. The hue hasn't changed at all in this case. The only time I would change the hue at this point is for shading. And I'll show you a bit on that now. So we've got red. And there we go. So first thing I'll do is the tiny bits, so the, the yellow. So I'm going to go in and grab a softer brush for this one. Lower it down. And then grab the eye. So th this is when I would change the hue of the drag of the the color, the dragon, totally. Um, and when I do this, I'm going to move this toward the green because this is going to be the shadow of it. It's going to be a bit darker. And then we're going to kind of come in and just do that top piece because the top part of the eye is where the darkest point of the eye is. And then the same the other side. And then when you want to go light go toward the orange and go lighter toward the bottom. Now I'm also going to grab a a white and chuck the white in as the pupil because the pupil always makes the characters. It really does. It just it makes them amazing. And then we've got a little bit up here and then I'll go into the, the, the greeny funny colour go toward the green a bit better and then go into all the depth pieces in here to where oh, oops we're on the line layer still no no you can't do that there in there and go a little bit darker where needed just to show that there's dark in there 
And then the same with this one, so darker toward the green. And like that. And then a little bit lighter toward the orange. Just a tiny bit. Yes. And then with that one, go lighter a little bit for this part. And lighter where it's still. So it just kind of nicely puts it together. And when you go into the feathers, the same idea. Dark for the dark, more toward the blues and the base. Like so. And then coming into the light, so toward the yellows a little bit. Like that. So like you can even see, I haven't even done much. Like you could sit there for hours for your, like playing with the hues and stuff. But just on the head alone, it just looks nice to change it out a little bit. So darker. I might just line that out a bit there. And then lighter. So toward the pink, so it goes toward the yellow. For just a piece on his nose. And then you can just see once I bring him up a little bit. When I zoom out, um, it already, the Tedriatic is working its magic. Alright, so I'll go one more dragon with the same colors, but swapping the swapping the dominant color just to show you how many different different kinds of colors you can get on one set of four colors. Like it's insane. So our main color for this one was purple. So I'm gonna make my main color green. So grab the green and say, let's go, we'll go a little bit darker this time around. So we'll go about there. Make a new layer underneath it. And maybe perhaps a little bit lighter for this one. Oops, we need our ink brush back. Makes life a tad easier to draw lines to fill them in with the paint bucket tool. Which, if you don't know what the paint bucket tool is, if you go into, well, obviously you know what the paint bucket tool is. A little trick with the paint bucket tool. If you grab that and you come up here and click all layers, it'll go within any line. Alright, so I'll go down on this side, like so. So we've got our main colour. This is going to be our dominant colour. So we'll grab a darker green this part here so we can mix those colors in a bit better go all right what color goes with green definitely yellow because yellow when darkened goes a really gross green color well not gross but like it's a mustardy ish color not one of my favorite colors and then There we go. It's a little bit wretched because the pixels, it's quite a low res drawing. It's only 1920 by 1080. Now I'll go down to the belly. Here, all right. So the main part of that wing is going to be yellow or color similar to. So this is going to be more of a muddy dragon, like a, a swampy dragon. And then go, all right. So what, oops, we kind of have a mistake down here. There we go. So we think, all right, because we've got our greens and our mustardy yellows and things. So in this case, our sec we used green for that second color. So the colors we have left is red and purple. So in this case, I would go red because it can go into a more of a kind of like a uh, a redwood color like trees can be this color 
So it kind of mesh meshes with that swamp feel. And then a little bit darker for this back one. And then go, alright, so where else we got the feathers? So we'll go darker on the head there. And that's an ear. And then go, alright, so we've got that, and then lighter feathers for the tail. Like so. I actually might change this just a bit. That's better. Because, like, you can already see that blend, it then blends nicely. And this is still yellow. This is still classed as yellow. Like, and the only thing I've changed is the brightness and the saturation. But it still looks green because yellow does that when you add black to it. All right, so then we go. Um, so we've got we've got green and green and green and yellow and yellow and red. We still have to grab some purple in there. So go into the purple, and because the purple is going to be our eyes and our ears, I'm going to go for like a little lavendery ish look. Like this, and then dark for the pupil. Oops, better zoom in. And then for the ears, I'm going to go even darker this or the ears the horns I mean and the ears I'm going to go stick with a more light but dark at the same time so when we zoom out so many spaces so many all right and zoom out and using exactly the same colors the same base colors Oh, what I might do though is actually make that a little bit darker because pupils are quite dark. Oops. And then that's our line. Now always, always put like a little, unless your guy looks an alien, it just, it just makes the character. So we've got more of a swampy dragon. Like even then, I could even just like darken those wings a little bit to make him more swamp like. Like he lives in the swamp, and that green could go a little bit less saturated. Yes. Oops, we're on the wrong layer, regardless. Go back to that color. Double check your layers. And we we'll just, just, just like that. Um, you know, just play with those. The biggest thing I could say is play with the the brightness and saturation. Like, don't be scared to play with those. And there we have. So we have two kinds of red, a bit of purple in there. and yellow. So we've used the same colors, we've just changed them up. So like just the brightness and saturation. I haven't touched the hue, same with any of these. All of these, I've just pick, got the hue straight from the color wheel and I've just changed up the brightness and saturation. And when you do this, make sure you make sure you balance it nicely. So this first one is quite bad because it doesn't blend as well, so bad, badness. Because with this one, I just kind of put all the colors everywhere. So it doesn't really, you know, there's no joint colors here. It doesn't, here does work a little bit, but then this green doesn't really, you know, and the yellow and the pink here, it just looks completely out of shape. Now this one is a little bit better because see how we've got this piece here. The greens are the same so it mixes in and then the 
orange turns to a bit of a brown that resonates and puts balance between the green and the brown, which is orange, comes off the orange. And then the brown goes into this purple, this pinky purple, which is still quite dark and in the, like the rain forested tree sort of feel to it. And then it goes into yellow, which obviously suits the brown, like yellow, my bad, orange, goes into the orange. And then even with the tail, it's, the purple is the opposite of the green. So it just kind of, it's the complementary colour straight off the bat there and up here. And then we've got... What just happened? There we go. And then we have the blue, which... We just kind of, because it didn't really click with much of anything else. I mean, you could probably add a bit of blue in there and stuff. We've put it on the smallest parts of the picture, which is the eye and the horn. And then the same with this guy, we've blended it in, so the purple with the purple, and then the purple mixes with the pink. And then green is the complementary colour to the purple, so it like joins in nicely there, and then you've got the big colour of pink in there. And then the complementary green and purple together here, so it just joins nicely. And then you've got the yellow because there's not too much that yellow works with purple all too well. I mean, it's complementary. It definitely goes... There's many different complementary colours. So it's nice to put it a little bit smaller because you've got all this other stuff going on. And again, with the small, medium, large. So we've got the, the large spaces. So you see, we've got the large... And then you've got the small with the feathers, and then, yeah, the more medium. So it's like going working with all the shapes of the creature. I'll go into more into the small, medium, large at another time. And then, again, with this last one, we've blended in the yellow and the green suiting each other because when you're dark and green and lower the saturation, it looks nicely. And then adding that, that purple in makes it look more like swampy that adds to that swamp effect and then because the purple doesn't really need to be popping out at this stage we've added to the ears the eyes and we've got the red on the tail so there's many 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 different ways to do the tra the tetradic color theory color scheme all right well that's it for today i will be also doing a little video a little bit later this afternoon on my little 600 page sketchbook and all the stuff that i plan on drawing in it like you know during the the challenge that i'll be doing in june i just ordered the book because you know i didn't know how long it would take to get here and i'd like it before june so i can do the actual thing in june which is filling, it's called the Sex Sketchbook Slam, and I'll go into more of that in the video. Alright, I uh, hope you liked it. Thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't. If you didn't like it, let me know why. Maybe give some pointers or what, whatnot. And subscribe if you want to see more. Tomorrow I'll be back with a tutorial on monochrome colours, which will be pretty simple and easy. Um... And then it'll be the weekend, so the good old weekend and Mother's Day. Um, but yeah, so enjoy your night and see you all later.